Bienvenidos, Usham D, and welcome Anne Arundel Community College learners from the spring 2023 semester taking the CTS 233 Section 400 Network Programmability course. This is the Cisco Networking Academy's DevASC 200-901 Certification Exam Preparation course. And in this video tutorial on Lab 7.6.3, we're going to be closing out the lab by looking at automated testing using PyATS and Genie. And our focus here is parts four through six on Genie. So what are you going to learn in this video? Well, you're going to learn about the differences between Pi ATS and Genie. I'm going to give you a great analogy that I hope kind of drives home one of the key differences. And remember, Pi ATS was created by Cisco and Genie was also created by Cisco in order to automate a lot of testing for network devices. Now, I want you to think of Pi ATS as kind of like the United States Navy. They've got this huge framework that provides a massive range of testing tools and libraries in a really comprehensive fashion, and that's Pi ATS. So think of Pi ATS as like the United States Navy. And I want you to think of Genie as the US Navy SEALs, right? They're a specialized, highly trained, and highly focused group that is going to execute on specific, very specialized tasks that tasks that the larger Navy would not be doing. And so Genie is like the US Navy SEALs, right? They're a specialized framework and they're focused on network automation with Cisco devices, at least in our use case with Cisco devices, right? And the other big difference is Pi ATS is not a not uh, configured based on data models, right? So Pi ATS, we were using Python files, right? Well, with Genie, we're gonna be using Yang, or I should say YAML files based on the Yang data model, right? So again, Pi, Pi ATS, not data model driven, Genie, is data model driven and specifically Yang data model driven. All right, well, let's go ahead and dive in and let's make this happen. And again, hopefully those analogies and that explanation gave you a good understanding, <clears throat> excuse me, of what is going on. All right, so we're gonna be using Genie. We've already installed it, so we don't need to worry about that. Now we're gonna create what's called a test bed file. And this is going to be our YAML file. And this YAML file, is going to define all of the connectivity parameters needed to connect to the CSR1KV. So I'm gonna say genie dash dash help. And again, this is gonna give us that abbreviated list of commands and options that we may be interested in. Now, right here, excuse me, right here you can see there's a create option. And that's gonna allow us to create a uh, testbed, YAML testbed file. But let's take a look right here at a little bit more detail on the create command because we can say um, genie and then the name of the command and then help. And so what does it talk about here? So here's the usage. So genie create subcommand and any options. Well, here's the subcommand. Are we creating a parser? Are we creating a test bed? Are we creating a trigger? So we're creating a test bed and that's what we would be interested in. And then you've got some general options down here, right? Dash V verbose, Q for quit. So that is what we're going to do. Now, the command that you see, right, is gonna show additional options that, that are not listed here. So, so now we can go ahead and run the setup command in interactive mode that we're gonna to need to create the YAML testbed file for us. So let's go ahead and dive in. There is one option in here I wanna point out that is very important, and that is gonna be not only the encoded password, but when we put in this SSH um, uh, algorithm, uh, option here. All right, so let's go ahead and say genie create testbed interactive. Oops, interactive. And we'll say output and YAML. And this is the directory we're going to put this testbed uh, YAML file in. And it's important to point out that if that directory uh, doesn't exist, it'll be created because it doesn't exist in, in the Pi ATS directory right now. So it's going to be created. And we're gonna say encode the password. So we should see the Cisco user password encoded. Um, I have seen it where it doesn't encode it for some reason, but we should see that it's encoded. All right, so here we go. And we're gonna say no, no, 
no. Device host name is going to be CSR1KV and the IP is 192.168.1.129. Uh, and the username is Cisco and the default password we're going to put in is Cisco one, two, three exclamation mark. If there was an enable password, we could put it in right here. So you can elevate privileges using this test bed file, right? Just like we saw we could do, uh, in the, I think it was the Ansible scripts we were looking at. All right. Um, and Let's hit enter and then the protocol. So here's what we're going to say, SSH dash O. So here's an option, algorithm R-I-T-H-M-S equals Diffie dash Hellman group 14 dash SHA-1. And the reason we have that in there is because we need to support this older Diffie-Hellman Diffie algorithm when we go to connect. If we didn't put that in there, we would get an error. All right, and then we're gonna say more devices, no. All right, well, my YAML testbed file is created. Let's see what that looks like. So we'll say more YAML testbed. And so there is the YAML testbed file. Uh, and okay, super. So it did encode the password, right? Uh, and again, I've seen it where I think it might be a mistake on that command line that you enter in where it'll actually put the password in clear text in here. So always give that a quick look. And if it is in clear text and it's expecting it to be encoded, uh, I think you might get an error as well. So keep that in mind. All right, so now that we've got that, we've taken a look at the file, all of our information is in there. We're gonna parse the output from the show IP interface brief command and we're gonna do it into, and we're gonna get JSON data back. So show IP interface brief from where? Okay, well, let's pop over here. So here is our CSR1KV. Again, this is running uh, the same code that we're running in the course, which is Gibraltar 161205. And this is the latest and greatest CSR1KV uh, Gibraltar uh, train release of code. So I'm gonna say show IP interface brief. And you're gonna notice I've created all of those loopback addresses, loopback one through five, 100 through 104, 300 to whatever. So I've created all of those getting ready for some netconf labs. And we wanna make sure we've got a nice rich set of data with which to work. And we're familiar with JSON already. So seeing all of this should not be too terribly uh, shocking when we go to run our genie parse script. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna say genie parse. And what are we parsing? Well, we're parsing the output of the show IP interface brief. And I'm going to run it again. I'll run it twice. I'll run it with interface and brief spelled out. Then we'll run it with it, um, uh, the shortened version, uh, abbreviated version, and we'll see what happens. So where's my testbed file at? Well, that's in the YAML directory. And the name of it is testbed.yml. And what are the devices that I'm going to be working on here? So the devices, it's just going to be the CSR, 1KV. I'm going to hit enter and it's going to ask me for the enable password. And again, you can see using default YAML encoding since no key was specified in the configuration, shared key not secure. Again, we could do a PI ATS secret key gen and then add that to our comp file to make this even more secure, but we're not going to do that step here. I'm going to hit enter and there it is, right? So take a look at that. And what are we getting here? Well, we're getting a uh, Python, I almost said Python. We're getting a JSON, and I gotta go way back up here. We're getting a JSON dictionary. And in that dictionary are basically a bunch of key value pairs that are other dictionaries, right, for the interfaces. And you can see right here. So there's the main JSON object it's a Python dictionary. Here's our first key value pair. The key is interface and the value is gigabit, uh, e I'm sorry, and the value is the dictionary that contains giganet etherbit one. So then I could refer to loopback one with the, val with the key and the value is a Python dictionary that has all of its interface status information. So we could go in here and try to check and match on the value for loopback one. We take a look at the key and get the value to see, is it up, yes or no? So let's do this, right? Let's let's mix it up here, spice things up. Let's come over here and let's go into uh, interface, I'm sorry, global config mode, get into interface loop back one and say shut. And we're gonna shut that interface down. So if I say do show IP 
interface brief, we can see that it's administratively down. Well, if it's administratively down, what happens when we run this command again? And again, the enable password, there isn't one, so we just hit enter. It's gonna go ahead and run, and let's go back up and check and see what it would say. My guess is it's gonna say no, but let's confirm. For gigabit ethernet, or I'm sorry, for loopback one, I think I said gigabit ethernet one. So for loopback one, interface okay? Yeah, it still says yes, but what's our status? So the status changed to administratively down, right? So the interface is okay. It's just that the it interface is down. It is not up, right? So that's what we would see if that was the case. All right, so we get all of that output and we see it in the JSON format, right? Which we could, you know, leverage that and create a, a Python dictionary object. So now we're gonna run, uh, what do they want us to do here next? And hold on one second. I think that was, do the, I think that was the same thing. I'm gonna run the command again. I'm gonna show you what happens here. What if we abbreviate the commands, right? So if I say show IP int brief, what's gonna happen there? All right, sorry about that. Thought I hit enter and it's going to bomb. Right, so show IP int brief, that may work from the CLI, but we wanna make sure that we spell it out. And you can see there, they give you the results match, show IP interface brief, and then show IP interface interface. So that is one of the reasons we wanna go ahead and spell that out. Okay, and then they wanted, and I apologize, oh, show version, that was what they wanted. We wanted to do show version after we did the show IP interface brief. So let's come back here and let's say show version. Now, what if I do show ver? Is that gonna work here? Let's check it out. Let's see if there's ambiguity here or if we're good. All right, so we can abbreviate that, but the show IP interface brief we need to be careful with. And again, we see all of the information here of the show version output. And we'll focus down here on the uptime. It's been up for 17 hours. What's my version, right? The short version, the XE version. So we see all kinds of interesting information here. All right. That is what they wanted us to focus on there. And so that's how we could parse things. Um, let's see if we did, you know, we did show IP interface brief. We did show version. What if we did a show um, run, right? What's that going to do? Let's see if it takes the show run first. Or if it comes back and says, hey, that's, you know, couldn't find that under the parser. And maybe that might not be, let's do show running config and see if it takes that. Running dash config. All right, let's see if it takes show running config. And again, experiment with some of the Cisco commands that you're familiar with. Okay, so it can't find the parser for show running config. So maybe some other show command would work for you. Like show, I'm trying to think. Show version, show IP interface brief. Man, I can't think of any other show commands off the top of my head that we could run right now. Um, run it with a full show version, that's obviously gonna work. As I'm trying to think of another show command that we might run uh, to get some interesting information. And I simply cannot think of, I guess we could do a, well, I don't wanna, yeah, we don't wanna mix it up. Okay, so we'll leave it the way it is there. Okay, so now we're gonna use Genie to compare configuration. So we're going to go in and we're going to change the IPv6 address on gigabit ethernet one. So if I was to say do show IPv6 interface, and maybe that's what we could do, show IPv6 interface brief, we can parse that out. All right. So if I do that, you can see that uh, gigabit one is up. And let's keep going down here. Uh, but it doesn't show the IP address, for, hold on one second here. Let's do show run int gigabit ethernet, gigabit ethernet gig one. Oops, sorry. Do show run interface gigabit ethernet one. Okay, and so it's got that DHCP, so good. So there's no IPv6 on there. I thought there might've been an IPv6 address in there already. So we're gonna go into interface gigabit ethernet one, and we're gonna say IPv6, and before we do that, actually, this is now popping into my head, let's say show IPv6 interface brief. So that's a show command that we could run that I think we're gonna be running here shortly. And it didn't like that. Oh, did I typo that? 
No, so it definitely didn't like that. So let's go ahead and step back here. And I thought that that would... Oh, what? wait, what did I say? What was the command? I think I may have had a typo. I think I said show int. Show IPv6 interface brief. Okay, so maybe it doesn't like the brief. And again, this is sort of test and fail here. So let's take a look. Show IPv6 interface, and then we'll spell out. Or no, I should be able to say gig one. And this should give us that information. But it returned empty. Okay, good. So, because there is no IPv6 information configured on that interface. Okay, apologize there. So now let's go ahead and get this uh, IPv6 address. We'll put a uh, global unicast address on here. So we'll say 2001 colon DB8 colon a CAD colon, oops, sorry, colon uh, and 56 colon colon 101 slash 64. Now that will also automatically configure the link local address on here because we have to have the link local address. So do show IPv6 interface brief, which is good to go here, shows that information. So now if I came back over here and we parse this output again, uh, there we go. And we should see all of that IPv6 information. So there we go, right, neighbor discovery. It's got the neighbor discovery information up there as well as you can see right up here, the ND. So there's our IPv6 neighbor discovery information. Uh, there's the ICMP information, the IPv6 information. And so we get everything there for gigabit ethernet one. And it wanted us to dump the output. And so let me run that again. So let's go output and we'll say verify dash IPv, oops, sorry, IPv6 one. Yeah, so I wanted to run it to make sure, sure that it ran before we dump the output. So I, we can actually capture the output into a file and the file is gonna be verify IPv6. And so here we go, we see a little bit more information when we run the command. And so if I say LS, you'll notice that that verify, it creates a directory, right? And so it's in that directory that we have the CSR1KV um, show output. So let's say more on verify and then CSR1KV. Oops, sorry. And what did I say there? So let's CD into verify. Yeah, and oh, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't specify. I wanted, I wanted specifically, oh, sorry. Uh, I want that file right there. I think it's going to be the, oh, it's parsed actually. So the parse text, so if I say copy and paste, I would see the parse text. And there's all of that JSON data, which we could manipulate with Python. And again, the, the error that I had here was, I was trying to look at the, the gig underscore and that's not, I didn't complete things. If I hit tab twice there, it should have uh, showed me the rest of the options available but that is how you would see that parsed file. So now what we're gonna do is we're simply gonna go back in and, uh, and actually it wants us to take a look here at the, yeah, because I'm in the directory here. So again, had I run this file or this command here and hit tab twice, it would have shown me in that directory, verify IPv6, the different file names, and then I could have said, yeah, show me the console.txt. So here's all the console information and you can see We've got this plus, 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 right? And this is the configuration that exists from a console perspective, or at least in this text file for the console. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the IPv6 address on gig one. Uh, we're gonna change the link local address, in fact. And then we're gonna run a diff to see what changed. So let's go ahead and hit that. We're gonna say IPv6 um, ADDR, and we're gonna change it to FE80 colon colon 56 colon one link local. So do show IPv6 interface brief. There we go, we've got our custom link local address now instead of that EUI 64 generated address. And let's go ahead 
And we're going to run that genie parse command again. So I'm just going to recall it so we don't have to sit here and retype it, making sure we change that to a two. So we're going to say show IPv6 interface gig one. We're using our testbed file. We change the IPv6 address. Now we're sending this to a different output file. And it's going to be in a totally different output directory as well as you're going to see here in just a second. And there we go. And so if I say ls, you can see we now have verify IPv6.2 and verify IPv6.1. Well, what can we do with that, right? Well, <clears throat> we'll skip counting the files out. You know how to count out the files and look at the file. Well, actually, we should probably count the files out because we can see that. Um, and we'll do um, CSR. We'll take a look at the console file first. And there we go. And this is just, we're doing this to validate that uh, the link local address has changed. And there it is, IPv6 is enabled. We've got a different link local address. If I pull this back here and we say, uh, we want the text file. So we'll say console, I'm sorry, not console, not text, but the parsed. So we'll see the parsed file to give us that JSON data, right, that we can manipulate with Python. So there's that. And so finally, and again, we can confirm that that link local address has changed, and there it is. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use genie diff, right? So we're going to say genie diff, and we're going to look at the verify IPv6 1 versus verify, verify IPv6 2. And we're going to see what are the differences in those files. Um, and... Diff can be found at, and hold on one second here. So we've got the diff file has been created, so we should be good to go there. So let's go into, and hold on one second here. Yeah, there, okay, good. So it created the diff file for me. All right, I'm, just, I'm making sure that it created it and put it in this directory. So what had changed? Okay, so again, the minus signs mean that that config was removed. So the link local address that was on there originally has been removed and now we're, it's been replaced with our new link local address. And so that is the key to that output showing us what changed and it changed from, and you can just simply take a look here, changed from that address, link local IPv6 address, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, to that link local address. And the same thing is this little block of code changed and it changed to that. All right, so now we're gonna clean this lab up. It's as simple as saying deactivate. And so that is gonna wrap up the remainder of lab 7.6.3, where we took a deep dive look here at testing using PyATS and then pulled out our Swiss Army knife Navy SEAL Genie functionality and went ahead and dove into parts four through six. Again, be sure to take a look at the github.com or the uh, github.com for the Cisco test automation and download or clone those repositories and start messing around with PyATS. And you can actually uh, take a look at and really dig into Genie. Uh, again, that's uh, that Navy Special Forces by taking a look at the uh, documentation on the developer.cisco.com website. Again, they give you all kinds of very, very cool information here. All right, well, that is all I've got for Lab 7.6.3. Thank you for watching. I hope this is helping you out and making things a little bit more understandable. And as always, I hope to see you in the next video.